Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. And today we're gonna to be covering uh, face tracking in Fusion using the camera tracker. And uh, within Fusion, we can set it up so we can camera track a face to do VFX if we want. And here I just threw a nose ring on her. So she's got a nose ring. But uh, you would use this face tracking for any type of VFX you're doing. So let's go ahead and delete all this and we're going to jump right in. So the first thing we want to do when we track is uh, one, we want to get a nice mask to just track the face so we can get rid of all this extra stuff. And to do that, we're going to use the magic mask. So shift space, magic mask. And we're going to pop that in and our magic mask. We're just going to select her face. And then I'm going to hold the alt button so I can get rid of some of this hair. I really don't care about her hair. And uh, I might even get rid of her neck. I don't care too much about tracking her neck. There we go. I just want to make sure her ear and her face stays in there so we can get rid of some of this extra stuff. And just for good measure, I'm going to get rid of all this stuff in the background so it doesn't track. I'm going to go ahead and hit my better button and track forward and backwards. So now for play, we've got a nice track on her face. And to get a mat out of this, we're gonna go ahead and add a bitmap. And go from our, let me go ahead and zoom in here. Our mask to our bitmap. And let's clean our bitmap up. So I'm gonna make this a little hard, get rid of some of that black stuff around her hair. And, uh, We've got a little flashing, but that's fine. Because all we want is a mat to uh, input into our tracker. So we're only tracking this area. So now that we've got that, we can go ahead and bring in a camera tracker. We're going to add that. We're going to input our original footage and go from our bitmap into our camera tracker mask. And let's go ahead and save our project now on our camera tracker here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to hit preview and I'm going to slam our detection threshold all the way down. And I'm going to bring the minimum features down until I'm getting a whole bunch of features. That is good. And I'm going to go ahead and select auto track. So now if we look at our auto track, it looks like it's tracking pretty good. But I'm going to go to our options and I'm going to shut off these trails because I don't want them. And let's go to our solve button and let's just select solve. And uh, once we select solve, this is going to take quite a while. So don't get confused if your solver goes up and it goes back down, goes up, is almost solved, goes back down to zero. It's just this process of uh, solving as you see. So. I'm going to go ahead and go make a coffee and let this solve and I'll be back. So we're back with our solve and we've got some nice little points on our face and we're not going to worry too much about our solve rate up here because we're really not solving for a camera track. We're just tracking our face. So even though they're red, they're actually decent tracks for what we're trying to do. But to see what's going on here, first we want to go ahead and grab a 3d merge. If we bring our 3d merge in, on our camera tracker node, we have two outputs. One is our image output, which is just straight 2D image. And one is our scene output, which is a 3D scene output. So we can go ahead and input that into our merge 3D. And if we look at our merge 3D, and I zoom in, you can see we've got her face. And first thing I'm gonna do is go back to our tracker and I'm going to go to our options and I'm going to change our locator size down to something a little more manageable. And you can see our tracks are all over the place and not necessarily just on our face. But within here, we can clean all these tracks up. 
So if we go to our camera tracker, go to our solve and select show all names, you can see we can see our tracks a little better. So what we want to do is zoom out and make sure we don't have any tracks way off in the distance. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to start cleaning up some of these tracks we don't want. So all we have to do is select them and hit delete. So let's go ahead and clean up our track. And once we've got it fairly clean, we're going to uh, jump back into our camera tracker and we're going to select solve again and go make another coffee. All right and with our new solve, let's go ahead and look at our 3D merge and see how good it is. And again, we're going to clean up any of this extra stuff that's sticking out that we don't want. And once we cleaned up a little more, we're going to jump back into our camera tracker. And we're going to hit solve one more time. All right. So now we got our new updated uh, track and uh, we're just going to double check in our 3D. And you can see we've got a nice face here. And our next few steps are going to require us to select all these. Now, I've got a extremely beefy computer. And if I go through and just click and drag and select all these, it's going to shut my uh, DaVinci down every single time. I don't know why, but it does. So just watch it. Try not to select everything from this view or it's going to possibly shut you down. So let's go ahead and go back to our camera tracker. And I'm just going to delete this 3D merge node. We don't need it anymore. And on a camera tracker, we're going to go to our export. And first thing we want to do is we're going to uncheck this ground plane because we don't need it unless you want it. And then I'm going to go to my 3D scene transform and I'm going to select unaligned. I'm going to go back to my solve and instead of selecting all of these, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select all unselected tracks. And that doesn't seem to uh, lock my computer up if I do it that way. So let's jump back into the export. And we're going to select set from selection for our origin. And then we're going to click aligned again. And once we do that, we're going to select this export button. And once we export, we've got all our nice new nodes here. So we can bring them down and we can actually uh, disconnect our media from our little uh, mask and camera tracker and just shove them off to the side now. And if you notice, we've got some new nodes. It gave us a, a camera 3D node, a 3D merge node, a point cloud node, and it gave us a camera render node. So in order to see our point cloud, if I go to point cloud and I select make it renderable, now you can see we've got uh, all of our points in there. But I can go in here and change the size and I'm going to change it from cross to points. And I'm going to bring my size down. So it's a little more manageable there. And now you can see we've got our points tracked on our face. And in this first tutorial, I'm not going to cover uh, creating a mesh with this and exporting it out. I'm just going to cover uh, what you can do in here now. So if we look at our 3D merge, you can see we've got all our points in there. And the way this is working is our points aren't actually moving. If I play this, you see our camera is moving around those points. So now we can come in here and add whatever we want to this. So if I wanted to add a shape, I just plug it into my merge. If we look at our camera tracker node, now we have that sphere tracked with our face. So and with this, we can do whatever uh, graphics or VFX we need to do. So we can uh, say make a sphere and let's uh, transform it. We 
Let's look at our little merge node and see where our sphere is. Let's go ahead and change our material up. Let's change the color here. Let's add some exponent and uh, remember, right, we need to turn on our lighting and shadows. Let's go ahead and add a spotlight. Let's transform this to minus 90. Let's bring it up. We can go to our merge node and see where our spotlight is. So now we can kind of mimic that light that's going on there. And let's go ahead and add an ambient light. Let's uh, bring that intensity down a little bit. There we go. And now we can kind of do whatever we want. So we can uh, add a duplicate 3d node and uh, let's get 12 copies let's go ahead and offset those then we're going to rotate Then let's move our original shape. So now if we look, we've got uh, these cool little shapes going around our face. <laughs> and we can go back in our point cloud and uh, turn off those and make renderable. And if we want, we can even add more shapes. So I can add a merge, bring this in. Let's add another shape and let's go ahead and make this a cylinder. Let's change our radius way down. Let's change our height. Then after a duplicate node, we can add a transform 3D and transform our entire uh, little object there to go around our face correctly. So now if we play, we've got some weird facing going on in our character. And this is how you would create 3D graphics based off a camera track in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. So thanks for watching this tutorial and I'll probably do another tutorial where we actually take this and export it out to a mesh and use other 3D programs, create stuff to bring it back in for some more advanced 3D tracking and 3D graphics. So I'll see you in the next tutorial.